The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. The man said to Jesus, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go sell what you own and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. When the man heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children and fields with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We spent six weeks now pondering the question of what it means to be a welcoming church. We started off on Rally Sunday, that that day where we had a big tent service outside with the combined praise band and the choir and that delicious meal afterwards where everyone was encouraged to to invite their neighbors and friends to come and, and join in this celebration with Pastor Mark opening this, this sermon series that we've been in with the question, are we, in fact, a welcoming church? And that's a question we've been asking ever since. The next week, we talked about breaking out of our holy huddles, using this image of a huddle uh, from, from, from football where the, the team gets together and, and crowds together, not letting anyone else in, which is a good thing for, for a team and sports to do, but not so good for us in worship and compared that image to its exact opposite in faith, which is uh, the open table of the Lord's Supper, where there's enough room still for all of us to join in God's good and gracious feast. We then talked about how we are called by Jesus to go the extra mile, to do even more than what is uh, asked of us when it comes to greeting guests and welcoming others into uh, our congregation and into our lives. And then Pastor Mark preached on uh, the, the text where, where Jesus sends out all the disciples to, to share the good news. And he said that, you know, the harvest is ready. And we looked at, at welcoming guests just as, uh, as farmers welcome a bountiful harvest during the fall months. And then last week, everyone who is here who received, uh, w- received a, a holy kiss in the shape of a Hershey's chocolate kiss. Uh, there's still a whole basket of them in Pastor Mark's office. It's, it's slowly been dwindling down as uh, different folks, like, like me, for instance, have been going in to, to say hello in his office, making reasons to go in there. But really, the point of it was to say that all of us uh, have the ability to, to share God's goodness with that, that warm embrace, uh, whether physical or, uh, or, or um, figurative, 
of ways we can welcome others into, into our lives uh, in, in the way that really only uh, we can do through Christ. And so to this week, this week we want to conclude this series and consider what it means to treat others as greater than ourselves as we hear in our readings this morning and how we can make changes in our lives to do just that. Because really, making a welcoming church is a priority in all aspects of our life together. We've been talking about ways, uh, both in, in worship and in, our, in different meetings of committees, of ways we can give guests the attention they deserve. How we can make room for newcomers to be involved as they want in our congregation. But of course, being welcoming takes more than just a Sunday morning commitment. And so how do we make ourselves available to others throughout the rest of the week? When someone in your life seems to be on the outside looking in, how do you let them know that they are not alone? So many times God's people suffer in silence, not wanting co-workers to know whatever turmoil might be going on at home in their lives not wanting to admit to their superiors that they are barely hanging on. When we encounter folks who are in those parts of life, caring for them is an act of hospitality. It's like extending the confines of worship, of this very space out so that all people might feel that holy embrace of God, so that all people might feel that they are welcome at this table behind me. It takes empathy to let folks know that we see them. We believe their stories, and we want to see the world from their point of view. Because as we heard in the second reading, this is exactly what Jesus has done for us. Giving up all his divinity to become just like us, to walk in our own flesh and blood. And God calls us to do that same thing, to see the world from the lives and the eyes of others. And in today's gospel reading, it's, it's a really difficult thing to hear, that the, some of the things that Jesus says in today's gospel reading. At the end, we get the most uh, poignant part, less troublesome part, really, where he says that the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. You know, with all the difficult things that Jesus is is dealing with in today's gospel, as it concerns the topic of hospitality, Jesus is essentially saying what matters most is not our possessions or our status in society or the circle of friends that we have. What matters is that we leave our egos behind and follow Jesus in his mission to welcome all people into God's loving arms. To see these possessions in our lives as simply barriers to sharing the gospel and to focus rather on Jesus and God's people. At its core, hospitality is an act of stewardship. The most important asset a church has is not its building or its balanced budget but rather it's people. There's no point in in being a good steward of our finances if we are not first good stewards of the gospel. Sharing God's love with others is what separates the whole church from clubs and corporations. Because we don't focus on people out of an attempt to keep tradition alive or to have financial security, we focus on people because God has called us to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. In this community, we worship the God so adequately described in the second chapter of Philippians. Jesus, who it says, did not consider equality with God as something to be exploited. And if Jesus didn't consider his own divinity as something that he should use for his own selfish gain, then what are we doing with our own, even smaller, possessions? Jesus gave up everything that we might live. And the preface to that 
beautiful hymn in the second chapter of Philippians. Paul says that, asks us to let the same mind be us in us who is in Christ Jesus. To, in humility, regard others as better than ourselves. To do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. But to be like Jesus, who gave up everything out of sacrificial love for you and for all people. And really, all that we've been asking in six different ways over this past month and a half in this preaching series is that we each give a little bit of ourselves in order to make a space for new voices and members of the body of Christ to feel like we hear them, like we see them, like their voices matter. So that all members of the body of Christ can participate in what God is doing at St. Mark and throughout the world. To let go of whatever semblance of power we desire so that we can be open to what the Holy Spirit is doing through all people. To let go of our desire to have Sunday morning be simply a social hour only among old friends. To let go of our desire to only have new members for the sake of easing our worry about the future while firmly sticking to the routines of the past. To let go of our desire to have a bigger say simply because we've given bigger donations. Nobody owns St. Mark. Here we all follow Jesus. And as Peter points out, we can't do it alone. It takes Jesus Christ in his own forgiveness to do what is impossible, to take that extra step so that when we fall short, we can trust in God's unending grace. God calls us not to dwell on the past or the future, but to spend our energy in the here and the now. Newcomers and charter members and everyone in between are equally vital in the present ministries of this place. The Holy Spirit is always at work. The question is, how willing are we to participate in what the Holy Spirit is doing? Will you extend that invitation, as we heard with the Good News Bearers earlier? Will you step out of your, the comfort of your pew and greet all of God's people with that holy embrace of peace? Will you give freely and abundantly of your time and your gifts and your very self so that St. Mark can be a hospitable, caring, and thriving hub of God's mission in the world? May we all give up our own claim to power and walk among God's faithful people so that God's name might be revered in this place, in this city, and throughout the world. Amen. <laughs>